Welcome back, folks. All right, moving on. I'm not gonna mess with this stuff over here unless... Is there a pickup item up here in this grass? Uh, yes, there is. All right, found a Pokeball in that hidden spot, and what's over here? A potion. Normally, I wouldn't even mess with little things like this, because, but it's gonna be useful, so let's just go ahead with it. Can I sneak past this God, ah, dang it, I couldn't sneak past him. This guy, normally I would just fight him immediately because rich kids tend to give a lot of money, but it's they have really changed up the money system in this game. The, the devs, like later on in the game, the trainers give you a ton of money, but early in the game, they hardly give you anything. Are two water guns going to be sufficient? Uh, Whoo! Okay, it was. All right, uh, 90 hit points. Why couldn't you win? Because your Pokemon's... All right, I'm going to switch out this and this because shortly up here, there... Yep, there are two little girls that I have to fight. We're twins, so we battle Pokemon together. I think this is one of maybe two or three actual double battles in this entire region. Uh, maybe, maybe the devs will update the game later where there's a lot more double battles because that's what Emerald kind of specialized in. Water, you know what? Tackle. Let's focus on this thing right here. Tackle, because the C dot. You look how it's using bite. As long as I, we leave that C dot alone and we don't do anything to it, it can't do jack to us. And hopefully this low tad doesn't have absorb. It has absorb. Hopefully it won't absorb from Mudkip. I think it absorbed from Mudkip. Yep, it absorbed from Mudkip, but that's all right because Mudkip's gonna be able to take it out with this next hit right here. C dot storing energy. Uh oh. Okay, so Zigzagoon's gonna hit this C dot, and I don't know. Maybe C dot. It, no, C dot's not gonna be able to knock it out. Not that it matters. I don't care if Zigzagoon gains experience or gets killed in this battle. Okay, unleash energy. Yeah, Bide's not a very good move. It's too risky. All right, C-Dot's almost down. Let's finish him off here. Tackle. Thirty-five, thirty-five. All right, so Mudkip's only level 11. I want it to be 13 before I reach the next city, so I'm going to skip um, a little bit ahead because for right now, I'm going to go back to the forest and I'll grind on Pokemon a little bit, but my other purpose is in order to get... Uh, Pokemon who are exclusive to this forest, such as, say, uh, that little sloth thingy, or, uh, just a Wurmple, maybe even a Talo in here, but I'll see you guys in a little bit. Skip! Alright, we're back, and as you can see, I found a wild Shroomish, and it just paralyzed my Mudkip. Great. So, let's go ahead and toss a Pokeball here. That one guy said that there were no Shroomish to be found in this forest, and, gosh, he was right. I mean, Mudkip's level 13, just turned 13 recently, but it took a little while to get it there. And I couldn't find one slack off, like, anywhere. How are the IVs on this thing? Ooh, nice. Very nice. You know, if I were training other Pokemon, I might consider training that Shroomish right there. Uh, anyway, so I went forward to, like, make sure I had a clear path, uh, just in case I needed to go and heal my Pokemon before, uh facing off the rest of the trainers back there. But now that that's all over with, whoops, sorry. Let's get up to Rustboro City. Now I could run into the Pokemart and buy more Pokeballs, but I pretty much have nothing uh, as far as money goes. I could buy four Pokeballs and that's it. So for right now, let's just go to the gym first and then after the gym, oh, thanks. That hidden machine is cut. An HM can be used by Pokemon outside of battle as long as you've earned the stone badge. And unlike a TM, HMs can be used more than once. That guy was saying that the limber way you move, you're obviously a skilled trainer. Yeah, me with my little level 13 mudkip. Um, Alright, yeah, yeah, heal my Pokemon. So, let's head on over to the gym. Uh, normally, I'd go to the next route over before I attempted a gym battle, but because I've got a water type here with a special type uh, water gun, this is pretty much the strongest I can be at this point in the game for the Pokemon that I have. Don't take us gym trainers lightly, we'll show you why we're better, yeah. Alright, so Youngster Josh here, uh, get the, sorry, 
every now and then I forget that I've got the mouse on the screen. And he's gonna send out a Geodude. So this might be our first example of Geodudes that have the uh, sturdy ability that keeps them from fainting in one hit. One of many headaches that Double Kick would totally get rid of. Okay, that one didn't. I guess it had, uh, what's that other move called where you don't take any damage whenever you hit stuff? Like, like with Double Edge and, uh, uh, Takedown. If you, can be, if you can't beat me, you won't stand a chance against Roxanne. That is for sure. I am not making fun of this kid right here. Um, the AI of gym leaders is crazy. Plus, I think they changed up the gym leaders' teams a little bit. Like, I think before, Roxanne had one Geodude and then a Nose Pass. I think she's got two Geodudes now and a Nose Pass, which isn't that different. But later on, you will see just how much they changed up the teams. And they're sturdy, by the way. No, you would not have survived that first hit. And here's the other pain about Pokemon that have Sturdy, especially Skarmory. Later on, as the gym leaders continue to get more tough to beat, they also have a lot more healing items. So you go up against a Skarmory or, you know, a Graveler or whatever that has Sturdy, and then the gym leader heals it with a Hyper Potion, and then you bring it down again, heals it with a Hyper Potion again. That's fine as long as your Pokemon are strong enough. And something else I want to talk about, but I'm going to hold off a little bit longer, is maximum level of obedience. Alright, let's fight this dude. The reason I'm fighting all the gym trainers, although I skip over a bunch of trainers, I think it's important to fight these guys because their rock types give a lot of EXP um, comparatively to other Pokemon. Like fighting Zigzagoon or Wurmple or whatever, that doesn't give me experience or Poochyena. But these Geodude, for whatever reason, they give me a lot more XP and they're also higher level than anything else I've fought so far. So, except for that one level 9 Poochyena. But they're really good experience. And uh, obviously I'm not going to have a level 16 Marsh Taunt before taking on the Gym Leader. If you guys want to play it safe and do that, you know, go for it. But I'm just going to show you that it's easily uh, possible to use a level 14 Mudkip to overcome the Gym Leader. And as a reward, you also get a 16 Marsh Taunt, because I think that you can get all the way to 16 from beating Roxanne. Hi, I'm Roxanne, the Rustboro Gym Leader. I became a Gym Leader so I might apply what I learned at the Pokemon Trainer School in battle. Would you kindly demonstrate how you battle with which Pokemon? What makes me a boring trainer is that I don't rely on my team early on. I rely on one Pokemon, and the rest of them are just there to absorb damage. That's it. Uh, nose pass level 15, so... This is going to be a bit of a challenge, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to apply the decoy strategy in very short order. All right, okay, before I do anything else, take a look at this. Max Obedience, level 20. So after level 20, no Pokemon uh, will be able to level up past that. All right, see, the, there's that AI at work. Oh, it was an Auron. Whoops, I thought it was two Geodudes. Yeah, Roxanne never had an Auron. What the crap? Um, now this thing probably has the sturdy ability as well, but it won't do it any good because, you know, you, you need to be able to take it down in one hit otherwise. So Mudkip was actually at a pretty good level to take that Auron down. Uh, so the AI was supposed to be smart in switching there, but in this case it was actually dumb. It gave me two free hits. You know, I didn't take any damage from that at all. Uh, so is this going to be enough to take Nosepass down in three hits, or is she going to use a potion on it? Rock Tomb, Speed Fell. Alright, I could switch out, but eh. Okay, I think switching out would have been the smarter option there, because that way I would have restored my speed, and a different Pokemon would have taken that hit, which I don't care about anyway. Um, Alright, so... 300... Look at that! I'm gonna totally have a level 16... Now, that Geodude there, he's... He might actually be faster than me, so let's go ahead and do the smart thing and switch to this Poochyena and let him die in one hit. And if for some reason he survives, I might want to consider making Marsh Tomp like back to full health again. I don't know if that's really necessary. I might be making a really dumb mistake right here, but I think that Marsh Tomp can absorb one blow from this thing. Level 12 Geodudes. Alright, the worst thing that could happen now is him having Sturdy, and then him killing my Marsh Tomp, and then my team being unable to defeat him. Whew, avoided the attack. Now she's gonna use a potion, right? Oh, nope, she didn't use a potion. That's strange. I was really expecting that. Anyway, if you didn't want to run the risk that I just did to drag out this battle, then, you know, you could have just switched to a different Pokemon of no consequence, and then healed Marsh Tomp with a potion while to, to buy yourself a little time. 
Please accept the official Pokemon League Boulder Badge. And I got a bunch of money for winning. Yay! Mudkip is evolving. This will be a good way to end the video. Do -do 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 -do. I like how they totally like break apart into a bunch of tiny little atoms spinning around. Like I loved how in the show, um, it was like a white. They they totally turn white and they morph into a different Pokemon. I thought that was the coolest thing. This breaking apart into a bunch of spinning atoms that just seems a little too dangerous for me. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of Brel, I think, or should I get rid of Mudslap? I, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of Mudslap. I don't see me using it. Like, ever. I know that it's useful in lowering the opponent's uh, accuracy, and if I want to catch Pokémon without fainting them, Mudslap is the way to go, but... Water Gun's pretty weak on Marsh Tomp. That Stone Badge heightened the attack power of your Pokémon. No, it didn't. It also enables them to use Cut. Okay, that's true. Please take this with you, too. Obtain th TM39. That contains Rock Tomb. It inflicts damage and also lowers their speed. Uh, remember, a TM can be used only once. Yeah, I know. Alright, so take a look at this. Oops, not that. There we go. Now, Max Obedience is level 24, so I can get my Pokémon up to level 24 and before they'll stop uh, increasing. Which is good in a way that, you know, if they increase to level 25, they wouldn't listen to me anymore. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here, and I'll see you guys in the next episode if you're still listening with me. I hope you're enjoying it so far.